The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Wow, all these shows on basic cable about restoring things, such as American Restoration, are really cool. I wish I had an old piece of junk that I could restore into working condition. Oh wait, I do! We've got an old drill press. It's kind of beat up, the wiring is pretty bad, but I think we can make it look nice again and work better than it used to. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. Here is a drill press that we are going to fix up. It works, but we'd like it to look nicer and work as well as possible. Felix is gonna help me with this. Hey everybody. So yeah, we need to replace this plug because someone chopped off the ground plug, which is not a good idea. Probably rewire it, oil it up, repaint it, make a sacrificial material for this, make sure this is level, and make sure the belts are tight. And of course, it just needs a lot of cleaning as well. <laughs> I wonder if I'll find a mouse corpse in here. That would be gross. Oh, uh, no, there's more crap in here. Holy. Oh, geez. Look, it was chewing the wiring. There's just a lot of stuff in there. I still haven't got it all. I guess I could probably pull it out with some needle nose. Oh, uh, the switches should be fine, but I want to rewire basically everything. I mean, there's not much to it. Ugh, gross. Maybe we'll find the Declaration of Independence. What is that? Oh! Ah! Yeah, gross! There is a dead thing in there! <laughs> ah. I thought that was a stick, but it was a bone. May you rest in peace, yeah. little crew. Gross. The ground plug was chopped off. If you look here, see that's green? That's what's going to the ground plug. Um, if there's a machine or a piece of equipment with exposed metal, it's usually a good idea to have a ground plug so you see it's attached there. Yeah, just, it's always a good idea to leave as much wire as possible when you cut something. I can set the motor over on the work table. There's more room over there. Almost got it. Ready? Yep. There we go. A big motor. How heavy is it? Mm. Many heavy? Yeah, many. Oh, cool. I'm just going to make notes of the wiring here. I just want to make sure I rewire it correctly. So the wire that was carrying the most current was also the most destroyed. Should I tell my mom how badly this was wired. Leave a comment below. <laughs> <sighs> Red, I mean, that must be old school AC wiring because normally it would be green, black, and white. Mm -hmm. And it'd be ground, live, neutral. You know what we could do, Felix, is we could just use a multimeter and test the plug. Check this out. Is that a magnet on there? Yeah. Okay, so. Now we can test the continuity on this and find out which one's neutral and live. All right, so red is neutral and black is live. So red is like white. All right, that's easy to remember. So black is still black. This cord is going straight in the trash. I bought this drill press off that guy for $5. I think I could sell it for $10. So would you say this is more dirt or rust? Uh, I would say it's more, definitely more dirt, but I think the uh, dirt protected the metal from rust. <laughs> I would say on a scale of one to 10, cleaning up something so it looks nice and new is like an eight. So this is the main drive shaft for the drill. And then this is what moves it up and down. So this was here. Yes, that's exactly what it does. Now, Felix, you're removing the rust, you said, with the steel wool? Yes. Um, 
So the idea was to get the rust off of here. And the technique that I learned from a friend of mine is to take some steel wool, get a little WD-40 or PV Blast or whatever you have on the steel wool. We'll start with a, a more coarse steel wool and just uh, give it a little bit of elbow grease here. And it uh, will start tearing into that rust and pull it off of there. And then come back with a more fine steel wool and sort of continue the process and it shines it up pretty nice, just like that. That's gonna look sweet. We remove the motor and I'm going to test paint one of the pieces off the motor. We don't have, so normally what you do is you'd use a sandblaster to blast off all the old paint and just leave the steel, but yeah. But in this case, we don't have that, so I'm just gonna remove as much loose paint as I can and rust using the steel wool and then I'll paint over it. I had brown in my cart, but I don't know. Red kind of gives it a, gives it some pop, but it also looks a bit industrial. Brown would have just been boring. Then I was thinking about like getting like <laughs> white and black accents, so maybe it could look like a old Corvette, but at a certain point, you have to stop yourself. Really? So this was in here as insulation for the capacitor, but I'm just gonna put electric tape on it because cardboard, come on. Now it's time for a tech timeout. I'd like to take a short moment to talk about AC wiring. So for single phase US, most of the stuff in your home is going to be like this. There's gonna be a black, white, and green wire. Black is hot, that's the actual juice. White is neutral and green is ground. And by ground, yes, actually connected to the earth. When you're wiring alternating current, you wanna make sure that you put any switch on the hot line, which is the black wire, and then tie all your neutrals together, and then ground should go to any exposed metal. For instance, with the drill press that we're working on, the ground will be attached to the main iron chassis of the drill press. Or with electronics, the RF shielding will typically be attached directly to the ground line. So put the switch on the hot black line. Board. Start a riot with the new Riot Board. The Riot Board is revolutionizing the internet of things. This open source design features a powerful IMX6 Solo multimedia application processor with ARM Cortex-A core from Freescale Semiconductor. The Riot Board can be used with web tablets, desktop devices, single board computers, and portable media players. This nifty board also contains a 3D graphics accelerator, 4 gigabytes eMMC flash, and it supports both Android and Linux. Not convinced? The Riot Board also comes back by the Element 14 community, supported with open source code and full schematics to tackle any project. Visit element14.com forward slash Riot Board and get started today. What is that? Any more dead mice in there, I wonder? Uh-oh. <laughs> Better get the vacuum. That kind of looks like an alien head. Well, we can only pull it so far apart without a gear puller, so some of it will probably remain a mystery. The motor works, so I'm just gonna clean it up, repaint it, I'm not gonna try to rebuild it. Cause, yeah. I don't know much about AC motors. If it works, don't fix it. Check out these holes here. Um, that was uh, cut by hand with a plasma torch. You are different among your brothers because you choose to face this enemy alone. Dude, do you lift? Oh yeah, I'm gonna drink some Red Bull. So I'm doing a light coat first, uh, basically just to prime it with the paint. And then I'll go back over and get a thicker coat which will hide the existing texture. Oh, and then remember he pulls off his mask and you see the scars that Splinter gave him? Because of course, Shredder killed Splinter's master. Today in the Ben Heck Show, Ninja Turtles. I found some spray silver Rust-Oleum, so I'm gonna accent some pieces in silver and even some in black. Paint's dried overnight. 
So now we're gonna start putting this back together and I'm going to rewire the motor and run new cabling. Should look pretty sharp. These auto wire strippers are really useful when you don't have much room to work with the wire. Because as long as it can grip the wire, you're good to go. I'm gonna hit these with solder to make sure the connection is nice and solid. Because those wires are kind of old. I'm gonna get my big iron out for that. Hold there for a second. Okay. I'm gonna wrap them with duct tape, not cardboard. Get the polarity right, I believe I do. Yeah. This will insulate it good. There we go. That was the last time the capacitor ever saw daylight. There, I quoted Titanic. No one would expect that. Or would they? Okay. Ready? I crown you the king of the north! I took a photo of this as I took it apart, so now I can put it back together the same way. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna hook up ground to the chassis. I'm gonna tie all the neutral lines together. I think that's the right way to do this. It's not the way I found it, but I figured I should wire this the correct way. So this is the light and that's the motor. So here's the, um, here's the hot line coming from the mains. So I'm gonna put the hot line into both of these. So it's gonna complete the hot circuit to the lamp and then to the motor. I hope I'm doing this right. I'm gonna make sure the wires inside of the chassis aren't hitting the uh, gears or the shaft and then I can install this LED light bulb. I've never bought an LED light bulb before and I figured, you know, I'm sure it's more resistant to vibration than other light bulbs, so it's a good candidate. What's the worst that could happen? All right, everything seems to be working. The last step is to make a sacrificial material platform here, because obviously if you put something right here on the iron and you drill through it, it's going to hit the iron, which has happened only a few times. But so yeah, I'll just make a center or wood block here, and then I can put bolts in so it can be removable. Okay, the deal with these pieces, is that there'll be the sacrificial material under the drill. They slot together like this, and the reason why there's two layers is so we can put these carriage bolts with washers through here, like that, and then they'll set down on it, and then we can secure it with a wing nut. And then in here, I have, uh, there's an opening on the inside so the dust can be blown out through the slots. So I'm gonna sand them so I can glue the pieces together, then I'll also screw them together, and then I'll bolt them to the surface. And I made it out of white Sintra, so it'll bounce as much light as possible until it gets all dingy. <laughs> Meanwhile, 10 seconds later, well, it's all dingy. I should have rotated this square 45 degrees. That's okay, I've got the skill saw. So the uh, sawdust can collect down here, but then it can fall into these holes so we can hit it with the air compressor and blow the sawdust out because 
Well, I mean, you could remove this thing, but let's face it, most of the time we're just gonna leave it bolted in place. All right, so I'm gonna glue the halves together and then bolt them to the drill press. I measured how far I could stick my finger into these slots. Therefore, I knew the proper distance to put these in. So if I had these four bolts too far in, I wouldn't be able to stick my finger in and hold it while I tighten the lock nut, or the wing nut, I'm sorry. Now let's see if this old drill press still works. Ah, nice LED light. Let's drill a hole. All right. Well, it was very satisfying taking something old, cleaning it up, removing all the dead rats, and painting it so it looks nice again. It'll be a useful thing to have around our shop. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. In our next episode, we're gonna be working with some more tools, doing some wearables that'll help me solder. We'll see you then. Well, you know, if you say, what do you miss about the 80s? Yeah, the movies were a lot better back then. This totally reminds me of like an alien head. That'd be cool to go to the pawn shop and buy like a chunk of gold. I see dead crows. So everyone knows how calm and collected I am. So imagine someone completely the opposite, and that's my mom. I'm probably adopted or something. And then he's like, our last protocol droid disappointed Jabba the Hutt or something. And then in the background, they're torturing the robot. I don't, that makes no sense, but that's what happened. 3D. The Ben Heck Show was brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com.